If we look at the number line and mark a point off between the 0 and the plus 1, we can see we get 0 0.5. Now what we can say about this particular value, it's not a natural number, it is also not an integer. But what we can do with the 0 0.5, we can write it as 1 half, it means the same thing, 0 0.5 is a half and 1 divided by 2 is a half. And we can see the number on the top is an integer and the number on the bottom is an integer. Therefore, 0 0.5 can be written as a ratio of two integers. We can also see that if we take 0 0.75, this can be written as 3 divided by 4. Again, we have a ratio of two integers. If we now take another point on the number line, this one here, and we can see that that is actually 3.5. If we consider the 3.5, we can actually write this also as a ratio of integers, i.e. 7 divided by 2, because 7 divided by 2 clearly gives us 3.5. So you can see 3.5 can be expressed as a ratio of integers. And this, of course, is a top-heavy fraction, but the point is, it is a ratio of integers. Let's consider another number. Let's consider 1.222 going on and on, which we can often write as 1.2 with a little dot. In other words, we have a recurring decimal. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to let x equal 1.222 going on and on. And then I'm going to get 10x, which means taking the above and moving the point, to give me 12.222 going on forever. And now I'm going to write down the 10x again and the x and I'm going to subtract them, which means on the other side of this particular equation looking thing, I've got 12.222 minus 1.222. Now if I subtract these twos from each other, we get zeros. And obviously all of those are two, so I'd get zero there. And of course, 1 from 12 is 11, and the x from the 10 is 9x, giving me 9x is equal to 11. So I divide both sides by 9, giving me x is 11 over 9. Consequently, you can see that I've expressed 1.222 recurring as 11 divided by 9. So I've now expressed it as a ratio of integers. Let's recap as to what we've done so far. We've shown that 0.5 can be expressed as a ratio of integers, i.e. a half. 3.5 can be expressed as a ratio of integers. 0 0.75 can be expressed as a ratio of integers. And 1.2 recurring can also be expressed as a ratio of integers. Now there are some general points we can make here. If a fraction terminates, for example, 0 0.5, it stops at the 5, there's no other figures following it. 0 0.75, that's a terminating decimal, there's no figures, in other words, it doesn't go on for ever. And the 3.5, well, that doesn't have any recurring decimal places, it's terminating, it stops at the 5. All of those types of numbers can be expressed as ratios of integers. If you have 1.2 recurring and any number recurring, 1.3333 for example, 0.6666, they all can be expressed as a ratio of integers. As you can see, in this case, the 1.2 recurring is 11 divided by 9. Returning to the number line, I'm going to mark off 2 and minus 4 both of which we know are integers. And we're going to see if these two numbers can be expressed in a ratio of integers. We will start by looking at the 2, and this can clearly be expressed in the ratio 2 over 1. And if we look at the minus 4, this is minus 4 over 1. So we can see both the 2 and the minus 4 can both be represented by a ratio of integers. Any number that can be expressed as a ratio of integers is said to be a rational number. Does this mean that there are numbers on the number line that cannot be expressed as a ratio of integers? Yes, it does mean this. And these numbers are called irrational numbers. Examples are the square root of 2 and pi. 
you will not be able to express the square root of 2 in a ratio of integers, likewise pi. Now you will often have heard that pi is 22 over 7. Now I would like to stress that this is just an approximation. You will not find a number that goes on the top of a fraction, that's an integer, and another integer on the bottom of the fraction to give you pi. 22 over 7 is just an approximation. We will have seen this diagram in previous videos in the playlist and you can see that I'm going to replace integer by its symbol z. Now what we're looking at here is a diagram that could represent number sets. We have in the center the natural number set, the, here we have the whole number set and here we have the integer set. Now natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Whole numbers contain all of natural numbers plus 0. And the integers, well they contain all of the whole numbers, all of the natural numbers, plus minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on, keeping going more negative in steps of 1. Now I've added to the diagram that we've just been discussing and you can see I've put an extra area and I've labelled this rational numbers. Now that's because rational numbers contain all of the integers, all of the whole numbers and all of the natural numbers. And that's because all integers can be expressed as a ratio of integers. For example, we showed that minus 4 was equal to minus 4 divided by 1 and therefore minus 4 can be expressed as a ratio of integers. And we could do something similar for the whole numbers and obviously for the natural numbers. But of course the rational numbers have other values that are not integers such as 0.5, such as 3.75 and we've seen examples in this video of rational numbers such as 0.5 which can be expressed as a ratio of integers i.e. 1 divided by 2. And of course we also have fractions that go on such as 0.3333 that can be represented by 1 over 3 which is a ratio of integers. Now of course there are numbers that cannot be expressed as ratios of integers and they don't belong in any of the areas shown on this particular diagram. Let's have a look at a number 1.234, 234, 234. So we can see the 234 is repeated. So we can say let x equal all of this. So I've got x is 1.234, 234, 234, and the dots mean the 2, 3, and the 4 repeat, and so on. Now if I multiply x by 1,000, it means I can move the decimal point three times. So I end up with 1,234.234, 234, and I'll then have another 234, then those dots say, well, I could have another 234 if I so wished. What I'm now going to do is take x away from 1000x, which will mean me lining the numbers up, as you can see here, to perform the subtraction. Now, when I do the subtraction, obviously, all of this part is going to give me 0, whereas the other part on the other side of the decimal point is going to give me 1233. Therefore, you can see... I need to go to the other side and take the x from the 1000x to give 999x. So I end up with 999x equals 1233, divide both sides by 999, and I end up with this. I end up with x equaling 1233 on top of 999. So 1.234, 234, 234, carry on is a rational number. Now why is it a rational number? Well because I've just shown that it can be represented by integers in a ratio. So rational numbers are all the numbers that exist inside the natural number set, the whole number set and the integer set. In addition they're all the numbers that can be expressed as a ratio of integers. And this means that we have numbers that have the decimal fraction bit recurring or repeating. 
and by recurring I mean something like 1.3333 and by repeating what well, we've just seen in example such as 1.234, 234, 234 where the 234 actually repeats. In addition, numbers that contain terminating fractional bits are also rational numbers such as 0.75, such as 0.342. All of those are examples of rational numbers as well. Of course, there are other numbers that cannot be represented by ratios of integers and these are irrational numbers and we've already seen examples of those, the square root of 2 and pi. And of course, we'll be covering irrational numbers in the next video. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.